Hello. I am the storyteller. And today we will talk about Seville. Seville is approximately 2,200 years old. The original core of the city, in the neighborhood of the present A Street, Cuesta del Rosario, dates to the 8th century BC, when Seville was on an island in the Guadalquivir. Archaeological excavations in 1999 found anthropic remains under the north wall of the real Alcazar dating to the 8th 7th century BC. The city was known from Roman times as Hispal and later as Hispalis. Hispalis developed into one of the great market and industrial centers of Hispania, while the nearby Roman city of Italica remained a typically Roman residential city. Large-scale Roman archaeological remains can be seen there and at the nearby town of Carmona as well. Existing Roman features in Seville itself include the remains exposed in situ in the underground antiquarium of the Metropole Parasol building, the remnants of an aqueduct, three pillars of a temple in Marmola Street, the columns of La Alameda de Hercules and the remains in the Patio de Banderas Square near the Seville Cathedral. The walls surrounding the city were originally built during the rule of Julius Caesar, but their current course and design were the result of Moorish reconstructions. Following Roman rule, there were successive conquests of the Roman province of Hispania Baetica by the Germanic Vandals, Swabi and Visigoths during the 5th and 6th centuries. Seville was taken by the Moors, during the conquest of Hispalis in 712. The Moorish urban influences continued and are present in contemporary Seville, for instance in the custom of decorating with plants and small fountains in the courtyards of the houses. However, most buildings of the Moorish aesthetic actually belong to the Mudéjar style of Islamic art, developed under Christian rule and inspired by the Arabic style. Original Moorish buildings are the Patio del Yeso and the Alcazar, the city walls, and the main section of the Giralda, the bell tower of the Seville Cathedral. After conquering Hyan and Cordoba, he besieged Seville while capturing two nearby villages, Carmona Lora del Rio, and Alcalá del Rio. The decisive action took place in May 1248 when Ramon Bonifaz sailed up the Guadalquivir and severed the Triana Bridge used to provision the city from the farms of the Uliraf. The city surrendered on November 23, 1248. The city's development continued after the Castilian conquest in 1248. Public buildings were constructed including churches, many of which were built in the Mudéjar and Gothic styles, such as the Seville Cathedral, built during the 15th century with Gothic architecture. Other Moorish buildings were converted into Catholic edifices, as was customary of the Catholic Church during the so-called Reconquista. For example, the Torre del Oro, once an important Moorish naval watchtower along the Guadalquivir, was converted into a cathedral by 1271. After the 1391 pogrom, believed to having been instigated by the Archdeacon Ferrant Martinez, all the synagogues in Seville were converted to churches. Many were killed during the pogrom, although most were forced to convert. The first tribunal of the Spanish Inquisition was instituted in Seville in 1478. At first, the activity of the Inquisition was limited to the dioceses of Seville and Córdoba, where Alonso de Ojeda had detected converso activity. The first auto de fe took place in Seville on February 6, 1481, when six people were burned alive. Alonso de Ojeda himself gave the sermon. The Plaza de San Francisco was the site of the autos de fe. By 1492, tribunals existed in eight Castilian cities, Avila, Córdoba, Jaén, Medina del Campo, Segovia, Siguenta, Toledo, and Valladolid, and by the Alhambra decree all Jews were forced to convert to Catholicism or be exiled from Spain. Unlike other harbors, reaching the port of Seville required sailing about 80 kilometers up the river Guadalquivir, which had been heavily defended with fortifications since the Middle Ages. This made Seville the best defended port to receive the riches transported from the Americas. A golden age of development commenced in Seville, due to its being the only port awarded the royal monopoly for trade with the growing Spanish colonies in the Americas and the influx of riches from them. Since only sailing ships leaving from and returning to the inland port of Seville could engage in trade with the Spanish Americas, merchants from Europe and other trade centers needed to go to Seville to acquire new world trade goods. In the late 16th century the monopoly was broken, with the port of Cádiz also authorized as a port of trade. Throughout the 17th century, colonial trade declined. Compounded with these tribulations was the silting of the Guadalquivir River in the 1620s, which made Seville's harbors harder to use, and ceased upriver shipping. The Great Plague of Seville in 1649, exacerbated by excessive flooding of the Guadalquivir, reduced the population by almost half, and it would not recover until the early 19th century. By the 18th century, Seville's international importance was in decline. After the silting up of the harbour by the river Guadalquivir, upriver shipping ceased and the city went into relative economic decline. The writer Miguel de Cervantes lived primarily in Seville between 1596 and 1600. 
His short story Rinconete e Cortadillo, since the 19th century one of his most read pieces, includes much description of civilian society. It features two young vagabonds who come to Seville, attracted by the riches and disorder that the 16th century commerce with the Americas had brought to the city. During the 18th century Charles III of Spain promoted Seville's industries. More operas have been set in Seville than in any other city of Europe. In 2012, a study of experts concluded the total number of operas set in Seville is 153. The first newspaper in Spain outside of Madrid was Seville's Hebdomario Util de Seville, which began publication in 1758. Between 1825 and 1833, Melchor Cano acted as chief architect in Seville. Most of the urban planning policy and architectural modifications of the city were made by him and his collaborator José Manuel Arjona e Cuba. Industrial architecture surviving today from the first half of the 19th century includes the ceramics factory installed in the Carthusian Monastery at La Cartuja in 1841 by the Pickman family, and now home to the El Centro Andaluz de Arte Conemporaneo, which manages the collections of the Museo de Arte Conemporaneo de Sevilla. By the second half of the 19th century Seville began an expansion supported by railway construction and the demolition of part of its ancient walls, allowing the urban space of the city to grow eastward and southward. The Sevillana de Electricidad Company was created in 1894 to provide electric power throughout the municipality, and in 1901 the Plaza de Armas railway station was inaugurated. In 1929 the city hosted the Ibero-American Exposition, which accelerated the southern expansion of the city and created new public spaces such as the Plaza de España and the Maria Luisa Park. Seville fell very quickly at the beginning of the Spanish Civil War in 1936. General Capo Delano carried out a coup within the city, quickly capturing the city center. Radio Seville opposed the uprising and called for the peasants to come to the city for arms, while workers' groups established barricades. Delano then moved to capture Radio Seville, which he used to broadcast propaganda on behalf of the Franquist forces. On April 3, 1979 Spain held its first democratic municipal elections after the end of Franco's dictatorship, councillors representing four different political parties were elected in Seville. Constructed from crossed wooden beams, Los Cetas is said to be the largest timber-framed structure in the world.